Well, hello there. Thanks for clicking on that video. My name is Jude, and today we're going to be talking about EDC. Before we jump right into it, there are different types of EDC. Now, the word itself means everyday carry, so basically it's whatever you carry on yourself every day. But, you know, that changes for me depending on the season and weather and where I'm going and what I'm doing. So I thought today I'd talk about my EDC that I generally carry with me when I'm out in the woods or in the foothills filming videos for my YouTube channel. While I'm at it, I thought I'd quickly go over my urban EDC, uh, which is basically what I carry when I go to work or around town. Now, as a good millennial, I always carry my cell phone. It's nothing fancy. It's just a basic smartphone. I also have on me almost all the time I think a chapstick, or in this case, Blistex. Now this is important because I live in a high desert, so the climate is very dry, and uh, my lips get chapped. Now I usually carry my Urban EDC, which I'm gonna go over real quick in this. This is a Hidden Woodsman haversack. It's an old one. It's over four years old now. Um, and it's holding up just fine. I did break one of the buckles in the car door, which is why they're different colors. You do that, talk to Malcolm, he is really good about that. Um, I am first aid certified, so I always have a CPR mask. Always carry some extra snacks, headphones, gum. I like gum. And then usually uh, a few books. I have a notebook, uh, my Bible, and this. This might be called like a possibles pouch. It's got some note, uh, another notebook, a little one, a few pens and pencils, a little hygiene kit with nail clippers and a toothpick, and a hacky sack. Car keys. Uh, this is a Nightcore rechargeable flashlight and an old broken Victorinox. Just a little guy. Mostly my letter opener. Oftentimes I'll have an extra flashlight. This is a full-size Thrunite Archer 1A V3, I think is what it's called. Uh, anyway, that's, that's often with me, not all the time. Uh, for the past three years, this was my wallet. This is just a, a real simple clip in the, the waist belt wallet. But I was contacted by a company to uh, test and review a new wallet, which is awesome. Popov Leather, I think that's how you say it. Thank you so much. Uh, they sent me this. This is a, a new leather wallet. Let me remove all the cards so you don't see all my info. This is a simple, what they call their flat wallet. It's got a sleeve in the front for your ID. It's got little slots on the side or in the back for cards and cash. And then it got a big sleeve on top. Very nice wallet. I like uh, simple wallets. I don't like big fancy stuff. I don't put a survival kit in my wallet. It just gets bulky and I wind up not carrying it. This I'm more likely to carry because it's slim. During this time of year, my nose runs a lot. So I usually have a, a little packet of, of Kleenex. And uh, yeah, I got big nostrils, so boogers hang out. So those are basically the standard items I carry when I'm going around town or to work. Uh, what I have around my neck, usually I'll carry this around my neck, but I won't always carry this around my neck. The combo for me is more for the woods, which let's get into right now. Somebody tell me what 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 the heck is that? So I've been rocking my Tilly hat. I think it's a TH6, something with a six, uh, for two to three years now. I'm still going strong. 
but I recently picked up this straw hat at like a, a hardware store for like 15 bucks. It's not bad. It's nice and uh, nice and comfortable. Gives me lots of shade. Combine the two and my goodness, are you styling. These are the two hats that I bounce back and forth between in this time of year when the sun is very powerful. Uh, winter time, you might see me in a ball cap. Um, but these two hats for me make a lot more sense in the spring and summer because they also cover the back of your head and they give you a lot of covering. The other thing you might notice is my trekking poles. These have also become part of my EDC for out in the woods. If you had watched my solo overnight, you might have remembered that I hurt my knee pretty badly. It was swollen for a solid two weeks. These have helped a lot, uh, plus uh, just you know massaging it, icing it, all, all the medical stuff that you're supposed to do to it have helped, but these make it tolerable to hike around in these steep hills, um, but it's still, it, it, it hurts. So I'm gonna show you my Woods EDC. It's, it varies depending on where I'm going, so I'm gonna clarify certain things as I'm going along. Now, just like with the Urban EDC, I do have my phone. Most of the time I don't have cell reception when I'm out there, but I have it anyway just in case. You know, I do like taking pictures with it. Let's see in my other pocket. Got the chapstick slash Blistex, whatever. Um, lens cap, extra battery. I'm, I film a lot when I'm out here, so having that extra battery does to make sure that, it, well, that I can keep filming. I should also mention that I've been wearing a different type of pants, even in the hot weather. Uh, these are, what are they? True Spec Expedition pants. Um, I forget, I'll leave a, a little blurb at the bottom here. I think they're True Spec Expedition pants. Uh, pretty heavy duty pants, I like them quite a bit. They. Uh, they fit fairly well, and they seem to hold up really well too. Main features that I like are these side zip things that ventilate your legs. I get pretty hot when I'm hiking around and opening those up gives some good airflow. I also really like this, this pocket right here for smartphones. It's, it's behind the regular pocket. Cool pants. I approve so far. We'll see how they hold up. I've got a green pair and this coyote pair. Also, I always have wool socks and a nice pair of boots. Protect your feet when you're out here. It's super important. And don't be mad at me, but I've been wearing a cotton t-shirt. Um, as much as I, uh, the material cotton is horrible, I'm often working around a campfire and I'm less likely to melt holes in this than I am in a polyester shirt or a nylon shirt and I'm too poor for merino wool. Always have water with me. Doesn't matter if I'm going for a five mile hike, work, I'm gonna have a water bottle with me. And most of the time it's this one. It's my heavy cover canteen. It fits very conveniently on the side of my backpack. And it comes with a canteen cup as well that nests in there. So this together is a full kit. They are titanium. And titanium, if you get the good quality stuff, can be expensive. So that's why I only own one, I don't own two. Uh, cordage, this is something that uh, I, I will often take this entire roll of number 18 bank line instead of any other cord. I'll, I'll take this instead of paracord uh, because I can double it up and do a two strand twist or, or a three strand braid, make it three times as strong and uh, it's, it's a huge roll. I mean, this is like a pound right here of, of rope. Other option is something similar to paracord. I think it's a 220 cord, so it's light paracord, a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner. So you don't have to carry quite as much. I try to always have this first aid kit. Inside of here, it's not much different than if you watch my first aid, vid uh, first aid kit video. I've got... Uh, Anything from bandages and duct tape to gloves, uh, iodine, tourniquets, tweezers, even some sunscreen, 
some water purification, even a little space blanket too. Oh, this is out. Hopefully you can see me. Uh, this is very high contrast lighting in midday. I've started to carry a slingshot with me pretty much every day, even in my work bag. Uh, normally I have the simple shot torque, but if that's too bulky, I will carry my Hornet, um, Zachary Fowler stuff. This pouch doesn't always go in, uh, go in my bag. Usually it doesn't. Usually those are just in my pocket and I'll carry this on my, on my belt. This is a little pouch that I made full of, I think, 12 3 8 inch ammo. I'm getting more and more accurate to where I can generally hit the car, uh, the target about 10 yards, 8 out of 10 times. Uh, this is the Leatherman that I've been carrying. It's a rebar. This is an EDC Leatherman to me. And will actually sometimes go in my Urban Kit too. Ooh, there we go. Sun is behind the clouds. This is my possibles pouch. This is very handy to have and goes with me whether I'm going on a hike or an overnight. I've got two Mylar blankets. Can set up a shelter and keep warm with that. This is my field maintenance kit for my knives. It's an old, the pouch is like a an essentials pouch that an airline gave me when they lost my luggage. Uh, inside I have a CC4, that's a Falk Niven with a rouge on it, a little toothbrush, and a Nagura stone. So I can use the Nagura stone, wipe it on the CC4, and use the toothbrush to, to scrub away any rust spots on my blades. That toothbrush is not for my teeth. A compass. This is a Silver Ranger. It's got a mirror so I can signal with it if I need to. I have a lighter with me usually. And if that doesn't work, a small ferro rod. This was handmade. Oh boy, the sun, the sun. I'm not quite sure what kind of wood it is, but it, it throws sparks. And I'll have a Hidden Woodsman signal panel. That I could sit on, or a lot of times I have my Thermarest seat. Which, this thing right here. This is my Survival 10. Contents in here have changed over time. I have a a striker on top of the lid, a little piece of leather, fishing line, uh, some sinkers, and um, swivels, and safety pins, more fishing line, hooks, I've got uh, some stormproof matches and some fatwood. These are cotton balls soaked in petroleum jelly. Got a whistle, a couple pieces of fabric. These are cotton, 100%, so I could make char cloth out of it. Thread, needles for sewing things, and some wire in there. With this tin, I could potentially set up a shelter, trap food, and signal for help, making fire, all that kind of stuff, just with this tin. It's not a Bushcraft USA tin. I put that sticker on there. All that goes in my Possibles pouch. Because I run a YouTube channel, I do have to kind of think about filmmaking. When I just go out there by myself or just with my wife and we go on a hike or a little trip, I barely bring anything. I'm very confident with a minimal kit. All right, you ready for the fun part? For a long time, this was the knife that I would EDC out in the woods. This is a Mora High Q. It's a Scandinavian grind knife, very thin. I think it's like two millimeters or something like that. 
It's a very thin blade. Exceptional, exceptional. You cannot find these anymore. Uh, they don't make them. I have two in the carbon and two in the stainless, so I'm set. But if you happen to come across one for sale, get it. What I would consider an EDC knife would be something like this. It's a very small fixed blade. Uh, the, the cutting edge is, I think, only about two and a half inches. This is an LT Wright Frontier Valley, and for a while this has been my EDC style knife. Generally though, especially if I'm out in the woods, I bring something a little bigger. I bring something like this. This is uh, the NSK version 2 designed by Mitch Mitchell and made by LT Wright. This is uh, probably one of my favorite blades, so that often goes with me. It rides in an Appalachian custom leather sheath. Again, Travis makes some exceptional sheaths. They're beautiful and functional, uh, and he's my go-to leather guy. To be honest, unless I'm really trying to count my weight, this is way more functional and I can do a lot more with it. It's more comfortable, uh, and I feel, I feel more confident when I have this. So around my neck is a Wazoo Bushcraft necklace. This is a mini ferro rod with a striker attached to it, and a Wazoo Viking whetstone. And this is a sharpening stone. Now generally, I carry the Bushcraft necklace, the fire making one, inside my shirt, and the Viking stone outside my shirt, because I notice that when I sweat, uh, the Viking stone picks up some of that oil, and I've heard that once you add oil to a wet stone, you can't use water anymore. So that's why I'm trying to avoid getting this all sweaty. So that might seem like a lot, mainly because I showed you different options, not exactly what I carry. If I were to sum it up to my basic EDC kit for the woods, I always have a means of starting fire, I always have a means of cutting, and I always have a, a means of shelter or, or rope or cordage or whatever, basically the 10 C's. I have my possibles pouch and my first aid kit and water. And that's pretty much it. So one thing I like about my Woods EDC, my WEDC, uh, is that it's compact enough that if I wanted to, I could pare it all down to just on my person and in my pockets. Uh, but it's also expansive enough to build into an entire backpack kit. Um, in essence, it's a basic survival kit, and with this EDC kit, I could pretty much get out of any situation. Uh, and in the future, I'm going to be doing an EDC kit survival challenge where I do a, uh, a survival overnight using just my EDC kit. What am I doing with my hand in my pocket? <laughs> That's the hardest thing about filming, right? Knowing what to do with your hands. It's like I could stand there. So, there's my EDC kit. What do you think? Thanks so much for checking out the video. Thanks for all the comments and support. And I'm curious, what's your EDC? What do you usually carry when you're out in nature? Leave a comment below so I can uh, compare notes and steal ideas from you. Take care. <laughs>